Hello, in this video I will show you the steps I took to create this hollow light up jack-o-lantern made out of polymer clay. This little fella's name is Clive. He was minding his own business during the bloody harvest when he was unprovokingly attacked by my Borderlands character. Not to worry though, Clive is a pretty decent surgeon and stitched himself up with one of his own vines. Starting with an aluminium foil bowl, I am using Cosclay, mixing a 1 to 1 ratio of the yellow and orange. Roll it out into a flat sheet, then cover the foil bowl. It doesn't have to look pretty, we will be covering all this up later. Using a scalpel to sketch and cut out the eyes, nose and mouth. I was originally going to have the top lift up, but later decided against that. I gave him a full bake, then cut him open down the back and underside so that I could remove the foil ball. I could not have done this technique with regular polymer clay. He kind of reminds me of Wilson. So, we okay? Okay. I used a needle and thread to hold the cut closed. I would first push a hole either side with a needle tool, then thread it together. This looks really cool, so I see myself using this technique for something in the future. I am now covering over the cut and thread with some more clay. The lid piece was bothering me, so I permanently attached it with clay. I roll out a length that is tapered on either side and that will reach from top of the pumpkin to the base. Once I am happy with the length, I press it down with my fingers to flatten it a bit. Position it onto the pumpkin and blend in the sides. For the face details, I would hold it into position, lightly score, then cut, and place back into position. Blend it in and repeat for around all the facial features. I'll be giving this another bake really soon because I tend to squish everything, but before I do, I am brushing the surface with some baby oil on a paintbrush to smooth it all down. I then texture the surface with a needle tool. After it's baked, I continue the same process for around the back of the pumpkin. Time for poor Clive to be split open. I lightly score in a sort of zigzag jagged line and then deepened and widened it. Using a small ball tool to mark out the holes and then a larger ball tool to make those holes bigger. I then bake it again. For the green of the stem and leaves, I'm mixing in one to one green and yellow and a small amount of brown. I got these heart shaped cutters from eBay for $1 with free postage. With a heart shape pressed out, I make four small cuts with the scalpel. I then use this silicon sculpting tool to wedge into and sculpt a leaf shape. Then with a needle tool, I create the veins of the leaves. I then make many more in three different sizes. After I figured out what I was doing, I made the rest with more of a production line kind of an approach. I got quicker, but it was still a tedious task. Towards the end, I omitted the scalpel cuts and went straight in with the silicon shaper. My hands were hotter and the clay was softer, so this technique worked quite well. After about this many, I made a darker green by mixing in more brown and made some more leaves. Gave the leaves a bake. Moving on to the vine stitches. I roll out a short length with tapered ends. Check that it fits, then texture it with a needle tool. I add a little bit of bake and bond into the holes before adding the vine in. I repeat this process for the rest of the stitches, placing some at an angle to create a cross. For the needle that Clive will be holding, I am using Primo Accents in silver. I am also using some thin wire for support inside the vine that will be holding up the needle. Roll out the clay to the length of the wire. Cut a slit down the center and push the wire down into it, sealing it into the center. Again, texture with a needle tool. Press it into the bottom hole and start shaping it into position. I added a couple of leaves to the base of the vine and baked it again. My youngest son just made me this beautiful purple ring made from polymer clay. For the chopped stalk, I create a cone shape, rolling, pinching and pressing until it looks right. 
I then cut out small triangles from around the base, leaving it with a five pointed star shape. Picked my favorite orientation, add some bacon bond, cut the top of the stalk at a slight angle, add lines all around the stalk. With a small ball tool, I draw in three rings on the top of the stalk, brush it down with some baby oil. Back to the needle, I am adding some wire into the center, just like I did for the vine. Roll it out with a taper on one end and cut a slit into the other end. I'll be wrapping this slit around the vine. For extra support, I wrapped a small piece of wire around the stem to push the needle onto. I'm rolling out some more vines. These ones don't need any wire in the centers. Needle tool to texture twirling the vine into a nice shape, blending it to the stalk. I gave him four vines and baked him again. I attached the leaves with some bacon bond and a pair of tweezers works really well for this. I also rolled out some baby vines to add amongst the leaves. Drilled a hole in the underside. Now time to add some paint. I mix the brown paint with some drying retardant Brush it on everywhere and then lightly remove the excess from the surface, leaving the brown paint in all the lower areas. After the paint had fully dried, I used 400 grit sandpaper to expose some of the original color on the surface. The light I wanted to use for this didn't arrive in time, so I will use these for the time being. To diffuse the light, I used a cut up freezer bag, but I would have loved to have used some orange tulle like I am using for a different project. And now it is done. Let me know in the comments section what your favorite Halloween memory is. Growing up, we didn't go trick or treating, so we would come up with these elaborate designs to soak all of our friends who rang the doorbell with water. And we still gave them lollies. If you're into these kinds of videos, I would love to have you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of my future projects.